Hi and welcome to the video tutorial for Sprite Clipper. Sprite Clipper is a tool that you can use to find and extract sprites from sprite sheets that you can use for your video game projects. To open a sprite sheet, click the open button, use control O. Here I have a sprite sheet that features Vile from the Mega Man X series of games. And before we can find the sprites on this sheet, we have to do a couple things. First is to select a background filter. And here we have that background is the same as the top left pixel. This will determine whether a part of this image is declared part of the background or part of the foreground. And right now there's really only one method to do this, but it works pretty well. Next, select a connected criterion. I'm going to use the default right now, which is simple 8 connectivity. Then I'm going to click, click Find Sprites or use Control F. And here we have all the sprites in the sprite sheet have been identified and they all have a, a bounding box around them to show where their bounds are. If you want to clip some of the sprites, just select them by clicking. Come over here and press the clip button or use control C and those sprites get added to your clipped sprites list. If we look over here in this section of the sprites sheet, we see that Vile kind of got cut up into a bunch of different pieces here. We really don't want each one of these pieces to be considered an individual sprite. We want really the group of them to be considered the sprite. So what you can do is click on each different piece, then click the merge button or use control M. And we see that those different pieces were merged together into a single sprite that we can select and clip. If we look down in the bottom left hand corner here, we see what look like uh, frames of a dashing animation. And usually when you're dealing with animation frames, it helps if they're all the same size. We can see right here that these are not the same size, but if we select all of them, come over here and choose a reshape anchor point. I'm going to choose the bottom left hand corner. What this means is that this bottom left hand corner of each of these sprites is going to be kept in the same location, but the rest of the box will be expanded so that all these guys have the same size. So I choose the anchor point and click reshape and we see that each one of these guys has been expanded. I can click each to select, then clip, and here they are. We can verify that they're the same size by clicking on one of them. We see that the full size of this image is 57 by 46, 57 by 46. Each one of these guys has dimension 57 by 46. There are also buttons here to select all the sprites in the sprite sheet using the all button or use control A. And if you have any sprites selected and you want to deselect them, you can just click the None button and all the sprites in the sheet will be deselected. The None button is also activated by using Control N. What I'm going to do right now is use Control A to select all the sprites in the sprite sheet and Control C to clip them. And I can see that they've all been added to my clip sprites list. You don't have to worry about these sprites here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and these down here that we had clipped before, they won't be clipped a second time. So you don't have to worry about any duplicates. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open a new sprite sheet. Uh, this one features the bosses from the video game Lufia 2. I'm going to use the same settings we had before to find the sprites. I'll click Find Sprites. Now if we look closely, we see that there are some problems with the way that we had found these sprites. For instance, these guys here that are juggling these balls, each one of these balls was identified as a separate sprite. If we also look at this guy here, he has a few different pieces of him that weren't quite connected, and those were identified as separate sprites. We also see down here all these different letters here, they're all um, identified as separate sprites when they're actually pretty close together and could be grouped together as words. Now one thing we could do is go through and select each little bitty piece here as best as we could and, and group them manually with the merge button. But another thing that we can do, which is probably easier, is to change the connected criterion here from 8 connectivity to 8 connectivity with a 3 pixel half edge. What this will do is allow pixels that are close to each other but not exactly connected to be considered part of the same sprite. So I'll refine the sprites by clicking find sprites. And here we see that these jugglers are no longer separated from their balls. They are together with their balls. This guy here, um, the different pieces of him that were separated before, they're now together. And all these different pieces of text here, instead of being separated by characters, are now grouped together by words. 
I'm going to clip these sprites by doing Control All, use a Control A, excuse me, and Control C to clip. And they have been added to my clip sprites list along with the vile sprites that I got from the previous sprite sheet. After you have all the sprites that you want to clip, and you can uh, delete sprites that you don't want by you know, clicking them right here and pressing remove or by pressing the delete key. But once you have all the sprites that you want to save, you have to give them descriptive and unique names. This is so that they're easier to use when you, uh, when you uh, use them for your video game projects. Now all the sprites will automatically be generated with a unique name, but it's kind of generic. Label 80 doesn't really make much sense in the context of the video game I want to make. Instead, I'll call it Egg Dragon, I'll press enter, and rename the sprite Egg Dragon. Once you do this for all the sprites that you want to, that you want to save, you can uh, choose a method to save them. Sprite Clipper offers two different methods. The first is to save your sprites to a directory, or, to pack, or the second method, which is to pack them into a new sprite sheet. So what I'll do first is save them to a directory. I'll use my egg dragon and I'll just click some random sprites to go with him. Each time I select a new sprite by holding control and clicking, we see that I add another clip to the uh, sprites that I'm going to save to my directory. So once I have the sprites that I want, I can click save to, choose the directory, which I'll choose this VG assets directory. I click OK. And if we open up that VG assets directory, we see that we have all the images right here, all the sprites that we selected, including our egg dragon. The other way to save your sprites is to pack them into a new sprite sheet. So I'll demonstrate that right now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect all the sprites that I had selected before. Once I have no sprites selected, I'll click on here to deselect the last sprite we see that all clips will be used. So if you don't have any sprite clips selected, then all of them will be used by default. And this message here will let you know whether you have any selected or not. So I'll, this, this will pack all those sprites that we've clipped into a new sprite sheet. I'm going to choose a packing method. And right now there's just one, but it works pretty well. I'll click pack. I'm going to save it to the same directory as the rest of the images. I'm going to call it new sprite pack. Click OK. Now if we go to that directory, we see we have two new files, new sprite pack.png and new sprite pack.def. First thing I'll do is open up the PNG file. And here we see, uh, let me make sure it's within the window. Here we see that we have all the sprites that we had clipped. They're densely packed into this sprite sheet. The ones that we had uh, expanded to be the same size, you can see here they all have a little bit of buffer around them. Here we have the jugglers, and they are together with their balls. And here we have this guy who's not separated from the little pieces. And neither are uh, the different items of text that we had saved. Along with this PNG pack, we also have a definition file. And this definition file describes the uh, reload. This definition file describes the uh, size and location of all the sprites in the sprite pack. So for instance, if I look for Egg Dragon here, here we have Egg Dragon. He's located at 153, 122. So if we open up that sprite back here, go to 153, 122, yeah, that's about right there. And there's Egg Dragon, sure enough. Now this sprite pack definition file that's generated along with the PNG image follows the same format as the popular program called Image Packer. You can find this online by doing a simple Google search. Because, because of this, if you have any code or classes that already is designed to handle uh, uh, in sprite packs that are packed with image packer, they, you, you, they'll be able to work just fine with the sprite packs that are generated with Sprite Clipper. So hopefully Sprite Clipper will be a useful tool that will allow you to get new assets for your video games easily. This concludes the video tutorial for Sprite Clipper. If you'd like some more detailed information, please visit www.fluffynukit.com. You can drop me a line there if you have any questions or suggestions or, uh, or, uh, or if you find any bugs or anything like that. Thanks for listening.